Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And if you're excited about Texas Tech men's basketball, be sure to like the video. And, well, hey, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. We'll be giving you daily videos throughout the season pertaining to Texas Tech men's basketball, whether that's injury news, breaking down the game previews for each and every game of the year for the Red Raiders, and so much more. Be sure to stay in the know right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel. And shoot, while you're at it, like the video because Texas Tech beat number 15 Texas A&M in a charity exhibition. And I know what you're saying, RC, it's an exhibition. What does it matter? Well, if you watch the game, you could easily tell that both of these teams went after it, right? Both of these coaches, Buzz and Grant, went after it, right? And there are some positives and some things that we've learned about Texas Tech in just one game that they can build upon going in to the regular season. And let's start with just that right now as Texas Tech beat the Aggies in Denton. It was a charity exhibition, as I mentioned, but they beat them by the score of 89 to 84. And now Pop Isaacs led the way in this one. He was absolutely phenomenal for the Red Raiders, right? 30 points. And he shot 60% from three, six of 10 from three for the true sophomore guard for the Red Raiders. He also was joined in the double digit scoring department by Lamar Washington, Chance McMillan, and Devin Cambridge, who all were in double figures as well. Now, as a team, this is something that really stood out to me for the Red Raiders. They shot 41.2% from three and made a total of 14 threes. That'll play regardless of who you're playing, right? Let alone a top 15 Texas A&M Aggie squad, right? And this is a team that some analysts and some national writers have as a dark horse to make the final four in Buzz's squad down there in College Station, right? So again, I get it's a charity exhibition, but there are some real positives here for the Red Raiders, right? They only turned the ball over 10 times and they forced 14. Now, if you look at what I think really happened here in terms of Texas Tech and really what really stood out to me, right, this go, this team is going to be much improved from deep, right? They added some high-quality shooters in the portal, right? Mainly Ch Chance McMillan. He's a guy that, if you ask a lot of people, he was probably the best shooter, just strict shooter, right, strictly shooter in the portal this last cycle, this last offseason, right? He lands in the 806. You get a guy like Darion Williams, who didn't have the best game against the Aggies, but had a couple of flash plays, right? You also bring back a guy like Pop, obviously. I think the spacing is going to be much improved for Texas Tech, which will allow them to shoot the ball better throughout the course of the season. Now, got to ask you guys again, we're the most engaging YouTube channel for Texas Tech fans out there right now. Give me your one word to describe how you're feeling about Texas Tech beating the number 15 Texas A&M Aggies, even in a charity exhibition. I get it. It doesn't count for the overall record. But again, it's year number one of Grant McCaslin. You have a brand new roster outside of hand, a handful of guys. Excuse me. You got to feel good about this one if you're the Red Raiders. So, again, give me your one word to describe this win for Texas Tech and the Red Raiders over the number 15 Texas A&M Aggies. All right, let's talk about the standouts here. I've got three big ones, and I've mentioned them all already. It's Pop Isaacs who led the way, as I mentioned, with 30 points. And really, I guess that just speaks for itself, right? I mean, 30 points. I don't give a damn who you're playing in college. That's a good game, right? But there was a three- or four-minute stretch in the first half where Pop just took over. I mean, he literally took over, and he went inferno, right, from deep, right? He made four threes in a span of what felt like four minutes. He went absolutely in fuego for Texas Tech in Denton. Now, Chance McMillan, again, the guy that I talked about is going to be one of the best shooters on this team and arguably the best shooter in the portal this last cycle. He didn't shoot too well in this one from deep, but he made shots when Texas Tech needed them late in the second half. And he's a guy that you can tell that Grant McCaslin really trusts in terms of late game situations and putting him in a position where he can use his strengths. And I think that that was one of the biggest things that I think was my biggest gripe last year when it came to last year's team. It didn't feel like the coaching staff put them in a proper position to succeed in terms of putting the players in a place that they played to their strengths, right? They 
kind of felt like they were in a box. That's not the impression that I got here when I watched this game in terms of Texas Tech against the Aggies, right? It looked like Grant McCaslin put guys in a proper position that he knew, hey, this is your strength. Go out and do X. Go out and do Y, for example, right? And that's something that really stood out to me and something that I think is a massive positive in the step of, okay, Texas Tech isn't going to be stuck in a box all year. They're going to adapt. And that is something that Texas Tech fans really haven't seen, well, I guess for the last season anyway. The other guy that really stood out to me was Devin Cambridge, right? And this guy is just a Swiss Army knife. Don't be surprised if at times he plays the five if Warren Washington gets into foul trouble, okay? But he's a guy that just does a little bit of everything, right? Him and Darion Williams, in my opinion, don't do anything at an elite level but they're either solid or good at everything, right? And that's the kind of guy Devin Cambridge is. He's an experienced guy, has played college basketball at the highest of levels, both in the SEC and out West in the Pac-12, right? So he's a guy that's very well experienced when it comes to big games and playing elite competition. And that's what Texas A&M is. And again, I get it. It's a charity exhibition, but There are positives for Texas Tech here, and one of them was Devin Cambridge. His line was 14-6-1-2-1. So 14.6 rebounds, one assist, two steals, and a block. He just did everything for the Red Raiders out there, and he was a guy that just felt like he was always in the right spot for Texas Tech and making a play when the Red Raiders needed it most, specifically on the defensive end. He's a guy that can guard legitimately one through five. All right. Let me know. I just rattled off some three players there. Let me know who you're most excited to watch this year for the Red Raiders, right? Again, only a handful of guys back from Texas Tech's teams last year, which I think a lot of people think that's a positive. Some people think it's a negative. Whatever your opinion is, it doesn't matter. The roster had a lot of overturn, and that's kind of modern college basketball anyway, right? Let me know who you're most excited to watch. It could be a player returning or one of the new guys from the transfer portal, who are you most interested in and most excited to watch for Texas Tech men's basketball in year number one of Grant McCaslin? All right, probably the part y'all have most been waiting for, what we learned. What did we actually learn from this, RC? Well, here are the things that kind of stood out to me. I mentioned a little bit earlier, this team is going to space the floor, right? Are they going to shoot 41% from three every night? Hell no, and if you expect that, you're wrong, okay? but I think they're going to be pretty substantially improved when it comes to shooting the basketball. Because again, you're not going to be shooting late in the shot clock for shots. What seems like seven, eight, maybe 10 times a game like they did last year, right? There's going to be spacing. There's going to be moments where they go fast. There's also going to be moments where they slow it down and play to what their pace is, right? They can do both. But I think that that's one of the things offensively that really stood out is they are going to be much improved spacing. Speaking of the offensive side, they aren't afraid to get out and transition, right? They don't have a ton of height on this team. Let's be real about it, right? Warren Washington, he's the lone big on this team in terms of traditional size big, right? In terms of 6'10 or taller, right? They're going to get out and transition and make sure that they can do things in terms of getting to the basket, potentially getting an easy basket, but also creating havoc in terms of the foul trouble issues, right? That's one thing that they are really, really pressing. And I've heard multiple times from people that have watched practice numerous amounts of times this summer that they want to get out and transition and not every time, right? But when it's there, they want to capitalize on it. And that's something that I think Texas Tech really hasn't done really that well outside of maybe, I guess, two years ago, but they definitely didn't last year um, in year number two of Mark Adams. But overall, again, let's let's be honest about this. It's an exhibition. It doesn't count for the overall record, but I think it's huge from this standpoint. There's just a handful of guys returning. This is the first time that you've played someone in front of a crowd as a new unit, as a new team, with the new coaching staff, with all these new players, right? There's a bunch of new right now when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball. It's big that you could go out and win a game against a team in Texas A&M who, again, a top 15 team in the country. They are very good. And you go out there and you win and you have ebbs and flows in this game, right? Texas A&M had moments where I thought they were going to pull away. Then Texas Tech went on a run. 
Then they went on another run. And by the end of it, they win by seven, 89, or excuse me, five, 89, 84. So again, this is an exhibition, right? It doesn't count towards the overall record. But remember, Texas A&M was a dark horse candidate to make the final four by numerous analysts and national beat writers. That's just talk. I get it. But at the same time, that's a very good Texas A&M basketball team that Texas Tech just beat, albeit in an exhibition. That's something you can build on going into the regular season, especially right now with what Grant McCaslin is trying to do with this program. It's a big time win for Texas Tech, regardless of if it actually counts in the win and loss column overall for this season. One more time, I've got to ask you, what is your one word to describe Texas Tech beating number 15, Texas A&M, out in Denton in the exhibition? It doesn't count towards the regular season record. I get it, but still a ton of positives for this one for the Red Raiders. I'm R.C. Maxfield reminding you one more time, like the video if you're excited about Texas Tech men's basketball and you're number one of Grant McCaslin. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.